The real underlying deeper cellular cause of autism involves oxidative stress to neurons leading to neuronal toxicity and inflammation. Basically, there's inflammation in the brain and there's a lot of free radical damage, but there's not enough antioxidant protection to counter that. Now, your body makes antioxidants and they can come from the diet. But I did a huge deep dive into this topic and I found some really interesting information on some common deficiencies, okay, with many people who have autism. Number one, they tend to have low amounts of antioxidants. I already mentioned that, especially glutathione. That's the master antioxidant in the body that does a tremendous amount of work in protecting you and getting rid of toxicity and free radical damage. There's also low vitamin A. There's low vitamin E, low vitamin D. There's low zinc, selenium, low magnesium, and low omega-3. There's also uh, mitochondrial dysfunction, which is not surprising because anytime you have oxidative stress, you're going to have problems in the mitochondria deep within the neuron. And there's also something called high homocysteine, which you may connect with heart problems, but in this case, it can create degenerative symptoms in the brain. And the solution for that is B12 and folate in a certain form, which I'll cover in a bit. And there's also amino acid abnormalities, probably because of all the oxidation going on. These amino acids are really important because they actually are the raw material for all the enzymes and the biochemical pathways. So based on that data, the best diet that I would recommend would be a version of the carnivore diet because that will eliminate so many potential allergic type reactions that the person's having, including the gluten intolerance problem or a gluten allergy or a casein allergy or whatever, because a lot of people who have autism have food allergies and that creates more oxidative stress. So anything we can do to take the load off this oxidative stress by eliminating any potential allergic type things is gonna be really good. And within that carnivore diet, I would include eggs, okay, because you're going to get a lot of vitamin A in the egg yolk, as well as other minerals and vitamins. I would also include seafood and even shellfish, even though there might be a little bit more higher mercury. You're also at the same time going to get higher levels of selenium and zinc and other trace minerals which are very protective against these heavy metals. I would also include um, organ meats um, like uh, liver, beef liver. If you don't like liver, either get a good recipe or camouflage it in hamburger or take grass-fed liver pills. Because not only does liver have pretty much everything that I mentioned, including B12 and folate and zinc and selenium, but it's also a really good source of these amino acids that I mentioned. And it has something else, CoQ10, that is very, very powerful for the mitochondria. And that can be extremely helpful. What I'm trying to do in this protocol is instead of loading up with a lot of different vitamins, I'm trying to include the foods that contain those vitamins so you wouldn't have to take every single nutrient. Now, the tweak to this carnivore diet, which will make it not quite carnivore, it's going to make it more uh, more of a ketogenic plan because we're going to add a little bit of carbs, but not too much. Uh, you would add uh, microgreens or sprouts. Now, if you could find microgreens grown in soil, that would be the ultimate. Why? Because these baby plants, okay, like roughly about seven to 10 days, are some of the most phytonutrient, antioxidant rich things that you can possibly eat. And some of them are loaded with sulforaphane which is an effective known remedy for autism. Microgreens and sprouts are basically antioxidants on steroids. Now, to build up glutathione, there's two things. You have a remedy called NAC, which helps uh, indirectly build up glutathione, and selenium. Now, you could take selenium as a supplement, or if you're doing shellfish or seafood, you're going to get a good amount of selenium. Now, another really important remedy would be cod liver oil. Why? because it's the perfect EPA, DHA, omega-3s, as well as vitamin A and vitamin D. And the person who has uh, autism might need more vitamin D, in which case um, the best thing to do is to expose themselves to a lot of sun, okay, without getting burnt. They can't do that. 
like in the winter, then take a good vitamin D3 supplement, at least 10,000 IUs per day, probably more, like maybe even 20,000 IUs. That's going to act as a very potent anti-inflammatory. Now, if you're not doing the beef liver because you don't like um, liver or you're not going to do the pills, then I recommend that you get um, the type of B12 and folate that can help uh, lower homocysteine and greatly help this condition. The form of B12 that you need to take is called methylcobolamine, not the cyanocobolamine that many people take that they don't realize it's just a synthetic version. It's not the right one. And then the type of folate they need is something called methylfolate, not folic acid. Now, as far as coenzyme Q10, you could get that in organ meats, but it is a very um, effective measure to improve your mitochondria. So you may want to add that to the list with this extra thing called methylene blue. You can order it on Amazon or get it from the health food store, but methylene blue is very, very interesting. I've done videos about it. And depending on the age of the person, let's say they're a child, uh, I would recommend maybe 10 drops. It's a very small amount. If they're older, maybe take 20 drops. And both 10 to 20 drops is a very small dosage. And you would put that in a glass of water. You might want to add some electrolytes to it and sip it with a straw because methylene blue can greatly help reduce the oxidative stress in the mitochondria, taking the pressure off the neurons, improving um, the symptoms of autism. So there you have it. That's the plan that I would recommend. And if you have not seen my video on sulforaphane, and autism, you should check that out. I put it up right here.